Well, it works. So if you just TP somewhere or you just TP all the way up there, it just brings you back. Yo, so I was basically watching a stream of this one guy making his game, and then some guy in the chat brought up this topic of like anti cheat and like movement validation in general. And then it got me thinking, I haven't really made anything like this in a while. Neither did I even make any videos, like a tutorial or anything. So I was thinking, I looked up like movement validation tutorials and stuff to see if anyone actually done it. And I guess there are some people who did it, but at the same time, they're a little bit lackluster. I guess the Roblox documentation is good, but at the same time, I don't know. It, 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 just, it just didn't work out for me because like, there are so many measures that exploiters can take in order to actually reverse that, if you know what I mean. So, what we're essentially going to be doing here is trying to make a movement validation system. I already made one before the video just to make sure I wasn't being stupid or anything. So, as you can see in the workspace, I just have like this little block that teleports you up to the tower. And I also have a tool that teleports you to the mouse so you can actually test the movement validation. And then I have this script that just is going to be a visualizer for what we're going to do. So what we're going to be essentially doing is we're going to go into starter scripts. Uh, so, sorry, starter scripts. What? Starter character script. And then we're going to make a script and then call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it movement validation. Uh, I'm assuming whoever's watching this video actually knows somewhat how to script because I'm not going to be explaining everything. So we're just going to like. Define some variables like a circle player says, so circle players equals game get service players, and then we're going to be defining the player. So player equals get player from character script dot parent, and if we don't find the player, then just return, and then we're also going to get the character, which is player dot character, and then while we're at it, we also need the humanoid, which is character find for child humanoid. Let's type check it. And then we also need the humanoid root part. So you don't need to actually do like character find for child humanoid root part. You can just do humanoid root part, which literally references the humanoid root part, which I guess is a much easier way of doing it. So this is the base part. And then I guess we need the. Uh, so let me explain the logic of this before we actually do it. So what I'm thinking of doing right now is having an attribute of the last recorded keyframe by the server. And then every, um, I think it was heartbeat, every heartbeat, heartbeat is basically a one service uh, connection. So every heartbeat, I'm going to check the difference between the last recorded and the current one, if, you, if that makes sense, I guess. So let's initialize it first by doing like character, let's set attribute, last recorded, C frame, and then like team. Oh yeah, I forgot. Define run service. So run service, you game with service, run service. So. Here's where the actual logic part comes in. We're going to define the heartbeat connection. Connection. Da, da, da. Okay. Now we're going to reference the last recorded C frame, which is character get attribute last recorded C frame. This is going to be really important because, in case you want to actually teleport a player, you have to set the last recorded C frame. So that's like a way of making it global, I guess, if that makes sense. So right now, just for testing purposes, we're just gonna like, we're just gonna, we're not gonna do anything. We're just gonna do the difference, and we're gonna check what the difference is. So we're just gonna do like human root part dot position, recorded dot position, and then we're gonna do character set last recorded C frame, and then human root part dot uh, C frame. Sorry. So we're gonna press play right here, and then we're gonna check the difference. Oops. I had an error right there. Forget about that. That's something on my part. Uh, I meant to do magnitude. All right, that fixes that. So let me press play here. So as you can see, I can see the like the C frame difference. So I'm moving at a 0 0.2 difference, as you can see right here. And when I jump, it's like it's like 0 0.7, etc. So if I TP, you might see it spike up to 10. You might see it might spike up to like 12 or something. So right now the movement validation isn't like working, obviously because we haven't coded it. But I'm just showing you guys the little, I guess, visualization. This is the visualize script, by the way. Uh, I showed it earlier in the video. Anyways, so let's go back over here. So let me show you guys something. So if we're going to actually do this, you guys have to account for the player falling, which is what we're going to do. So if the player falls, their gravity is just going to keep increasing, increasing, increasing until it reaches like a like a 
10 stud difference, you know what I mean? So we don't want that happening. So to counteract that, basically what we are essentially going to do is we're going to define the x and z vector, which is literally just x, z, humanoid root part dot position dot x, and then 0, and then humanoid root part dot position dot z. And then let's do the recorded x, z vector, and then we're going to do vector 3 dot new humanoid root part dot position. Actually, ooh, I'm bugging. So position dot x and then zero and then rest recorded position dot z and then we're gonna do recorded difference is essentially x z vector uh minus recorded x z vector and then we're gonna do dot magnitude. So what this is essentially doing is just making like a clean vector three of just the x and z uh, x and z and here in x and z as well. Oops, I did not define position here. So the recorded difference is going to be about the same, basically just 0 0.2 for a regular player, which is like 16 lock speed. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to remove this and we're going to do recorded difference. So we're going to make another variable and we're going to call it like tolerable difference. And we're going to put like five, I guess. And then we're going to check if the recorded difference is equal or above uh, tolerable diff, then we're going to set the humanoid C frame back to the last recorded C frame. And then let's actually try playing and let's see if this actually works. So, as you can see, I'm moving fine. And if I try teleporting, oh, see, it brings me right back. And if I try going over there, yep, it brings me right back. That's perfect. So, if we go to teleport to the top and then we jump down, it doesn't rubber band. So, if we actually took their position and accounted for the y and we added it in there without making like a clean like vector three, it would rubber band us in the air. You know what I mean? So yeah, so what I was essentially gonna say was this like uh like movement validation system doesn't actually work for y axis teleportation. So if an exporter goes up there or down there, they'll still be able to teleport and not get rubber banded. So what you could do to essentially fix this is maybe make a no clip system. So the person can't just go under the ground and then go up. And I guess that fixed your problem. Because if we did make a, like a, if we did make it count y-axis, it would like rubber band in the air because of the gravity. I'm pretty sure I've shown that earlier in the video. So I guess if you want more videos like this, I guess uh, random scripting tutorials, just leave a comment, maybe like the video. I guess I'll make another video of this gets enough traction, but yeah, anyways, thanks. Bye, guys.